Hi, I'm Bob Hughes with JED Squared. Welcome to another RC6 rotary cutter instructional video. In this particular one, we're going to be talking about the round tube stabilizer system for the cutter. There are different stabilizers available currently. We have the square tube stabilizers and we have the round tube and then we have some others planned for the future. We could even custom make stabilizers for you. Anyway, without further ado, let's get after it. This is the round tube stabilizer attachment. Before I show you how to install it in the machine, let me go ahead and show you what's underneath right here. We have a 10 millimeter bolt with that um, uses a 17 millimeter wrench, by the way, and there's a plate that's adjustable on it. And what you can do is after this thing is placed into the machine and it's aligned up, we're going to go ahead and lock that plate in place. That means next time you load this thing into the machine, you're not going to have to worry about where to load it. That's going to be our locating device. I just wanted to go ahead and show you that right up front. Let's go ahead and start putting this thing into the machine. If you're new to the RC6 rotary cutter, this is what we refer to as the carriage assembly. And that's what is going to move the head and the stabilizers up and down the machine. Let me go ahead and bounce it out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and move the torch to the rear so we can see it a little bit better. Currently, we have the square tube stabilizer system already in the machine because we've been doing a lot of testing with it. We are going to be installing the round tube stabilizer. So the first thing we're going to need to do is remove this from the machine. We're going to do that with a 19 millimeter wrench and there are two bolts right here that we are going to undo. Let's go ahead and pop them out real quick. Alrighty. Give me a second. If I had a ratchet, probably speed it up a little bit, huh? Anyway, alrighty. I'm going to hold the outside of the stabilizer as I remove I'm basically holding it right here. As I remove the rear bolt, I did the, I removed the front one first. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the rear bolt. All righty, come on, baby. Probably could use a shorter bolt. All right, there we go. Okay, this is the square tube stabilizer system. You can see the adjuster plate underneath it here that we have adjusted already for this machine. Let me go ahead and set this down over here. Alrighty. Now we have the round tube stabilizer ready to go in. What we have right here is a bracket bolted to the top of the carriage, which allows us to easily switch between the square tube stabilizer or the round tube stabilizer. It itself can be located in three different positions. Currently, we have it in the middle position. The reason you would maybe want to move it further behind was if the torch was tilting or something like that, or you were doing a long cutout in a piece of tube, you may want the stabilizer further to the rear to um, reduce the possibility of the transfer of balls or something falling into a recess that you cut into the tube. That's why that's there. So we are going to go ahead and mount this onto the machine. It's very simple to do. You're gonna grab it. First thing we're gonna do is slide it onto the mount. And the easiest way to do this by far is to go ahead and put in the short bolt first in the rear. All right, about got that in. Okay, now that'll allow us to move it in and out, slide it fairly easily. Now we can go ahead and we will put in the longer bolt. Okay, let me see, wiggle it up a little bit. Believe it or not, um, that's almost, uh, that's all it really takes to actually bolt the machine or bolt the adapter into the machine. Let's go ahead now, we're gonna hook up the air hose to the rear and the wires and then we'll go ahead and line it. Let me show you how to hook it up. I'm now at the back of the machine, and as you can see, we have a single electrical connection and two pneumatic air lines that are going to the stabilizer, and we're gonna to need to hook them up. First thing I need to do is go back and disconnect the air to the machine. Okay, you could hear the stabilize, I mean, I'm sorry, the marker system, they fell once they are de-energized, there's no air going to them, they will naturally fall. All right, 
Let's start off with the electrical connection. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the wire guard right here from the machine so I could show you better what's going on. You don't need to do this normally. I just wanna give you a little better view. All right, here we go. Here's all the wires right here. Up front, we have different connectors that are not used. These are connectors that will go to like the lifter assembly, things like that, and they will be at the far back of the wire harness. At the very front though, there is a single connector. It's got a wire label on it. I will post the number in the video. And we're gonna hook our single connector from the stabilizer to that connector right there. We literally just push it together and that's all there is to it right there. Now at this point, we can go ahead if we wanted to and replace the cover. As I mentioned, you don't really even need to um, remove the cover because we have the machine wired where you could get to it, you know, fairly easily, but I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, put it on back anyway, or put it back on anyway. All right, there we go, we're good to go now. Now we are left with two pneumatic hoses right here. Now this particular machine does not have one of the hoses marked, which means I've got a 50-50 shot of connecting it to that cylinder correctly. I'm actually glad it isn't marked so I can show you what's going on. Anyway, right up here to the front of the machine, there's a high mounted solenoid valve and it'll have two plugs in it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the plugs and show them to you. All we've done right here is we've taken four millimeter tubing, you could also use five thirty seconds, and we couldn't get any plugs. The COVID kind of um, messed that up too. So I basically just took a piece of tubing, folded it over, tie wrapped it, and made a makeshift plug. Now the way these valves operate, oh, we do supply the machine with real plugs. We finally got some in. But the way they operate, the way these, I think they're called push to connect air fittings and essentially if I was to push down on this orange here I can get the tube out no problem. Now once I place the tube back in it and press it all the way until it's seated I can no longer remove the tube so they're called push to connects and that is what we're going to be connecting these two tubes to. So we're going to go up here to the solenoid the, the top solenoid, and we're gonna install these two airlines. Now, as I mentioned, I have a 50-50 shot of getting that right. I'm actually hoping I did it backwards. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and label one of the air hoses with our yellow electrical tape. Of course, you could use any color you want, but I happen to grab yellow. All right, that's all there is of hooking up the, the stabilizer to the control system of the machine. Let me go ahead and reposition the camera and I will show you how to align the stabilizer system in the machine. I've gone ahead and rehooked up the air supply to the machine, so the next step is to home the machine. Now, whenever you home a machine, what we're referring to is telling the machine where on each axis, for instance, this is the Y axis going this way, the Z axis is going up and down, and the X axis is going in and out. There's actually labels on the machine to identify the axis. What this means is we're gonna tell the machine, this is where your origin is, your zero, zero point, because the machine has to know where it's at. So in order to, um, let the machine know where it's at. It's a process called homing. Now there are switches in the machine that the individual axes will run up and bump against and that will say, okay, this is where my zero is for that particular axis. The only one that's really adjustable in the machine or needs to be adjusted whenever you change the configuration of the machine is the Y axis itself. And the reason for that is is the carriage has been designed for maximum versatility, which means we can be bolting in a round tube stabilizer. For instance, what we have right here, it is in the middle position. There's a left and a right position also. So obviously that would affect how far back the carriage could re, uh, retract before it hits the chuck. We also have other stabilizers such as the square. You could also not even have a stabilizer in the machine. You could be, let's say you're, you're doing six inch schedule 40 pipe, well, in that case, there'll be no stabilizer in the machine because you're turning the pipe directly with the chuck. Therefore, you're going to want the torch to be adjusted in its home position as close as you can get to the, I'm sorry, the torch adjusted as far 
back as you can to get it as close to the chuck as possible to maximize its usable range. So how do we set the y-axis? It's fairly simple. We have a bump stop right here, which is a, a strip of steel. It has a series of holes drilled in it, 12 millimeter holes. On the machine itself, we have a groove slot and there are four drilled and tapped 12 millimeter holes right there. Now, by placing this in different holes and the combination of the four threaded holes right there, you end up with a resolution of about a quarter of an inch or six millimeters that you can adjust the home position. Now, we took out the square tube stabilizer and we put in the round tube stabilizer, so we have basically ruined the home. The, the, if we home the machine, there's a possibility that it would actually hit the chuck. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is put the bump stop back into the machine. I am gonna place a bolt in the rear hole, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it in one of the middle holes right here. And we get that screwed down. Now I don't have to tighten it with a wrench yet. I can just finger tighten it at this point. Now what's gonna happen is when we go to home the machine, it's gonna come up quite a bit short. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I'm gonna try to stay out of the picture here. Up here in the top left of your control panel, there's a home button. You're gonna select home. Now we have already homed the whole machine prior because the square was in it, but we need to rehome the Y axis. So we're gonna select home Y and it pops up a dialog box right here. And what that dialog box is saying, this machine is about to begin homing and must lower the lifters. Do you wanna continue? The RC6 is if you have the extension um, option on the machine, will come with a fully automatic lifter system. And what this is saying, is in order to do the home, we are gonna drop that lifter automatically because we don't know if this stabilizer, since it's in the machine, is on the far side of the lifter or the near side. So if we left the lifter in the up position, it's possible we could collide with the lifter. So it's warning you that it's gonna drop it. So if you have material in the machine and it is being supported by the lifter, remove the material. All right, let's go ahead and say, yes, we're aware of that. And we're going to hit yes. You heard the lifter drop, that noise. And there we go. So what has happened, where I have placed the bump stop, it triggered off the limit switch in the machine, and the machine now thinks Y0, the axis Y, the zero place or position, is right here. Well, clearly, we can come back a little bit further. Now, if you take your tape measure and measure that, you know, you could do that, or you could just basically eyeball it. And I'm looking at it and saying about three inches. Now, if you did it with a tape measure, it's a very easy thing to do to remove the bump stop and just measure from the back surface of it right here to the back side of the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and place it back in the machine where I believe we're gonna be fine. Let's go ahead. Screw that back down. Now I'm still finger tightening it. There's no point in wrenching it at this point. I'm gonna go back over here. I am once again gonna select home Y up in the top left. And I'm gonna say, yes, I'm aware I have a lifter in the machine. And there you go. Now, by the way, the reason that dialog box pulled up is because there's a setting in the control panel that I have told or I have checked as true telling the machine there's a lifter in installed into this machine and therefore that's how it knows. If it didn't have the lifter in, that dialog box would not show up. Now if we look at it, we got about three eighths of an inch, let's call it 10 millimeters of play between the support roller and the chuck, and that's fine. You could, um, we could probably squeeze a little bit more out of it, but why take the chance, right? We, we got a good amount of clearance right there. Now I can go ahead and take my wrench. I can tighten up the 12 millimeter bolt, which uses a 19 millimeter wrench or a three quarter will also work. And essentially the machine has now been homed. The next step is for us to align the stabilizer itself. Let me reset it for that. Before I can align the tube stabilizer, we have to tell the machine that we've installed one into it. Now, the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna to go to the control panel right here, 
and we are on plasma cut right now. That's the mode that we're in. We're gonna to go to the top right up here. We're gonna select the drop down, and we're gonna select settings. That will bring up the page of all your settings, your all um, the watt attachments do you have in it, offsets, things like that. We're specifically interested in the one that says tube stabilizer, and we're gonna click that. And right here, there's gonna be a check box that when we check it, it'll tell the machine that you can use this round tube stabilizer now in fully automatic mode. So we're gonna go and check it. Now you'll hear the stabilizer engage. That's one way you know that it, it has been activated. If it doesn't engage, it just means it's in the open position. Go over, hit the switch. I'll show you that a little bit better in a minute. And you verify that the machine does know the tube stabilizer is in it and it can use it in fully automatic mode. All right, let's go ahead and align that stabilizer. I'm still on the settings page, which means I cannot move the machine. So in order to go back into cut mode, I'm gonna select settings over here and I'm gonna go to plasma cut mode. Now when I say plasma cut mode, I'm talking about cut mode in general. So if I was doing a wood column carving, for instance, I would still go to the cut mode, which is the topmost menu selection. And that will bring us up to here, which means I can now move the chuck. Let me show you something real quick about the keyboard. This is all customizable to your preference, but the way I've got it set up is I use the arrow keys in order to change my axes. If whichever axis I'm moving, I'm moving the torch in and out or whatever. Page up, page down keys are, are the actual torch up or down itself. Let's go ahead and wrap it back towards the chuck. Notice the carriage did not contact the chuck, so we've got the home correct. Another thing to show, to point out real quick about the keyboard is if I just hit an arrow key, that moves relatively slowly, that's the slow mode. If I hit, if I press down the shift and the arrow key, I get medium speed mode. However, if I select or I press control and shift key, I get maximum speed out of the machine. Just figured I'd go ahead and show you that. Let's go ahead and we have pulled the carriage all the way back to the chuck. Remember right now, everything is currently loose. This switch right here, will engage and disengage the transfer balls in the mechanism. We're gonna to wanna to click the switch until the transfer balls are in the open position. Now, what we need next is a piece of material to use as a reference to align the stabilizer to. I picked a piece of inch and a half DOM tubing. And the reason I picked inch and a half is in the real world, this machine is mostly gonna be used for cutting tubing in the range of three quarters up to about two inches. Now, clearly the stabilizer could handle up to three and a half inches, but that's gonna be a lot rarer than doing those other sizes. So I picked inch and a half for two reasons. One, it's kind of in the middle of that common range. And also it's, um, it will fit through the chuck. The chuck can handle, I believe, up to inch and five eighths. These machines are not designed to be utilized with the material running through the chuck. It completely defeats the purpose of having through um, through tube coolant, stuff like that. Anyway, I've installed the tubing into the chuck and it's hanging out the front of the stabilizer about an inch. I am now gonna snug down the tubing. You don't have to go crazy with it, but you do want it a little bit snug. All right, remember, this is still loose. What we're gonna go ahead and do now is align this utilizing that piece. Now that means I gotta go ahead and reposition the cameras again. Bear with me, I'll be right back. Let me go ahead and move the carriage away from the power head, which is this right here. Let me go ahead and tell you how the machine was designed and um, some of the thought processes. When we load up large tubing, we're typically gonna run on a roller type system that is mounted to the tube frame. Let's just say, for instance, six inch round pipe. We're not gonna be using a stabilizer for those, um, those situations. Now, when we put these different rollers in, a lot of other machines on the market, you have to adjust each individual roller, which is a nightmare. So what we decided to do was precision make the roller mounts and then have the power head itself move up or down. So when you put these different mounts in the machine, you put your tubing in it, well, it's sitting through all the mounts, nice, straight, and level. However, 
we do have to move the chuck up or down to get to it. Now, the way we do it is very simple. We have a wrench right here. It's got a 19 millimeter slot on the end in order to loosen up the bolts down here. And we can, we can basically insert the lever and lift and lower the power head wherever we want to go. Now you can see it's fairly easy. I'm just using two fingers right here. So that's the first adjustment that we're going to be making, or one of the two adjustments we're going to be making on the unit itself. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, let's go ahead and bring the stabilizer back, is it's loose and we can slide it in and out. So let's go ahead and we're going to engage the transfer balls and I'll show you how to align this thing. Okay, I think I've got everything um, set up here where you can see what I'm doing. Um, and yes, that is our prototype Pinocchio machine, the final machine in the background. We will be running that occasionally to show you uh, why I personally don't like Pinocchio machines, but that's it in the background. Anyway, the let me first tell you about transfer balls. There's three of them in the tube stabilizers that will actually engage onto your tubing while you're cutting. Now, on a typical machine, other manufacturers' machines, these transfer balls will engage and they will stay engaged on your tubing the entire time. Well, what we learned very quickly utilizing the machine behind us is that that very rapidly wears out the transfer balls. Now, transfer balls we consider a consumable item. In other words, you go down and buy a brand new car, you wear the tires out on it, they're just going to tell you to go buy another set of tires. That's the way transfer balls are, in our opinion. They are relatively inexpensive. They're $8. Now, here's the cool thing about the RC6. On the machine behind us that drag the balls up and down the tubing all the time, the life of these things could be measured in weeks or a, just a couple months. They didn't, very, they didn't last very long. On this machine here, the life has been greatly extended because the RC6 will only engage the transfer balls onto the workpiece when it's actually cutting. When it's not cutting, they're going to retract off the workpiece, and now you can go full speed on the machine and not wear out your transfer balls. They are also not high precision. They're pretty close. It, you know, typically when we mic them and test them, they're all going to be, be plus or minus 10 thou, 15 thou, but they're not high precision components. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is we make... Currently, tube stabilizers, two stabilizers. We make the round tube that you see here that'll handle up to three and a half inch OD. We also make a square stabilizer. And I'll be showing you that in another video. The square stabilizer is more precisely manufactured than this because we don't have to worry about the tolerances of, of the transfer balls. Now, this whole mechanism is pre precisely machined, CNC machine is very accurate, however, there is a little bit of gray area because of the transfer balls. So the thing that we decided to do was go ahead and make the square stabilizer and the round stabilizer utilize the same offset from the chuck. In other words, the distance from the frame to the rotational center is the same this way. It's also the same from the mounting point of the carriage to the rotation up or down. So once you install one of these, and set the setting, um, set your height of your power head and everything. When you go ahead and bolt in the opposing unit, let's just say you got the round in now, we're gonna put the square in, you're not gonna have to keep resetting this. They should be the same. Now, another thing, do you have to have it perfect? The answer is no. Let's just say this thing is out. Um, uh, let's pick a number, 20 thousandths of an inch. Seems like a lot, right? Um, it's not. When you run out, you know, a few feet, that 20 thou has become negligible at that point. Remember, the RC6 has torch height control anyway, so the only thing that's really going to alter anything would be possibly the left and right alignment of the stabilizer, which is very easy to set. So don't try to get it or, or don't, don't um, fixate on getting it perfect because it's just not that necessary. You want it really, really close, but you don't need it perfect. All right, let me go ahead and show you how to um, align this stabilizer. 
Remember earlier when I was hooking up the airlines to the solenoid, I mentioned that I had a 50-50 chance of getting it right or wrong? Well, turns out I got it wrong. Now, the way I could tell that I had it wrong is when I engaged the transfer balls. Right now they're open, now they're closed. In the closed position, the regulator gauge, the air pressure gauge on the back of the regulator stayed at zero, which means I've got it on the wrong side. So what I did, I went back in the rear, I took my yellow electrical tape and I marked the inside hose. It doesn't matter which one you mark, just so that you remember it later. I marked it just so that the color tube is closer to the machine. Now, next time I go to hook it up, I'll just place that, uh, that tube into that particular port, the one that's got the tape on it. All righty, let me go and set this down. Just wanted to point that out to you. That's how you tell. So that brings us to the point of why have a regulator at all. Now, if you could see, the transfer balls are traveling quite a distance before they slam into this inch and a half tubing if they're, if they're adjusted all the way out. Now, these bolts here are the adjustments for that. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Let's just say you're using aluminum tubing. You don't really want to slam these balls onto your tubing all the time because it's going to dent your tubing up. It's going to be too much pressure. You could use the regulator to basically adjust the pressure that the transfer balls are exerting onto your workpiece. So if you're using aluminum tubing, we're going to back it down. If we're going to use steel tubing, we're going to want to raise the pressure. If you're using very heavy tubing, let's just say we've loaded up a piece of three and a half inch tubing, um, pretty heavy wall, 20 feet long. Well, it's a good possibility that the weight, the sheer weight of the tubing alone can overpower the transfer ball mechanism. So you're gonna want the air pressure in the full on position. You want as much power as you can get. Now, if your heavy tubing does overpower the transfer balls, I'm gonna show you um, a way around that. This machine has been designed to take that into consideration. I'll show you that in a second. All right, so now you know all about the um, regulator. Here's what we're gonna to wanna to do. Um, let's go ahead and in, um, engage the transfer balls, right? Um, yeah, so they're engaged right here. By the way, don't ever put your finger in there. I mean, it's literally gonna take your bones and turn them into powder. So uh, it's got a lot of force. Keep your hands out of there. I just noticed this machine does not have the warning label on it. I apologize. All production machines have a warning label on it. Um, I have no idea why this one doesn't have it, but you know, it will be very shortly. Anyway, um, before I go, I guess before I go showing you how the, um, no, nah, I guess we're okay. First thing we're gonna wanna do, there's a roller on the back side of the machine. See see the picture and we're going to adjust it down so that it is not interfering with the workpiece. Okay. Now we're going, and now remember this whole thing is loose, right? We're going to go ahead and engage the rollers. I am going to look at the rollers from the front of the machine and they are all three engaged onto that tubing. Now I can go ahead and I've got the front bolt. Remember there's two bolts back there? I've got the front one just a little bit, you know, not even finger tight, it's just there. The rear one is the one that I'm utilizing on, or utilizing, and I can tighten it up. Now, let's just say for instance, that we were wrong this away. It was wrong. Just start moving it in. Um, until it looks like it's, the balls are getting closer and closer to the tubing. You could also adjust the height of the power head up and down utilizing those two adjustments, left and right, up and down, you will center the transfer balls onto your workpiece. Now, a good way to know that it's pretty centered is let's go ahead and snug up that rear hole. I just snugged it up a little bit. I didn't pull it tight and engage and disengage the transfer balls. Now, when I do that, I don't see the stabilizer trying to go up or down or, or try to move around, trying to pull the chuck like right here. It's not moving the chuck in or out. There's a lot of force on this thing. It'll actually try to pull the chuck. So essentially at this point, I'm looking really, really good. Um, the stabilizer is centered on the round tube. It's not moving, the chuck's not moving. Now I can go ahead and lock down both bolts. And you're gonna wanna tighten them up, you know, pretty snug. You're not gonna wanna go crazy. You're gonna go pretty snug. And um, 
That's it. We are. We now have the, stu the stabilizer itself, at least as far as the transfer balls go, are aligned. There is one more adjustment we need to make on the transfer balls, and that's going to be setting the roller. Let me go ahead and um, set the camera up for that. This is the aluminum V roller right here mounted on the back side of the stabilizer. What the purpose of it is, is that as we disengage the transfer balls off of the material, naturally the workpiece is going to sag and we're going to want it to be supported by this V roller right here as the carriage goes up or down the machine. However, we don't want to adjust it right against the tubing because it may scratch the tubing as we're rotating it. So we're going to adjust it just below the level of the material. Now what I discovered is that uh, one thing, a sheet of paper is five thousandths of an inch thick, and I discovered that by folding the paper so that I have six layers, I could place it under the tubing, push the roller bracket all the way up, then I use an eight millimeter hex wrench, and I tighten it down. Now this particular bolt, you're going to want to snug down fairly good, because if you think about it, when the carriage is at the far end of the machine, this roller, if the transfer balls are disengaged, is the only thing that's supporting the tubing. So you don't want to just, you know, tighten it lightly to where it may slip down. You want to tighten it up fairly snug. All righty. So that's all there is for the adjusting a V roller. You could see it spinning pretty easily. Now the other adjustment is, or not adjustment, it's actually a time saver, is remember on the lower part of the machine, I showed you we had a a plate down here that was adjustable. I hope you can see it okay. It'll slide, slide in back and forth and all. Now what we're going to want to do is adjust that plate to where it bumps against the mount because there's also one on this stabilizer. So all I did was I slid the plate far as back as it would go. I then used a 17 millimeter wrench and I tighten that up pretty securely. I really want that snug. Now, the next time I go to load the stabilizer into the machine, I'm gonna carefully place it on the mount, slide it back until that adjuster plate contacts the mount, tighten down my two bolts, and I'm good to go. I don't have to keep playing this alignment game every time I change it out. So that's how you would do that right there. Now. The next step is we got to go ahead and lock down the power head. Let me go ahead and um, reposition. On the lower side of the lifter is where we have the adjuster nuts. Now, as I was raising and lowering the power head, once I got it to where I wanted it, I basically just finger ran down the top nut. That would hold the lifter up. Now, underneath it, there is another nut. I'm going to go ahead and loosen it right here. And if I spin it down, you'll see it. That's the lock nut. We're going to want to run that back up and utilizing the 19 millimeter wrench end on the lever, we can go ahead and just snug that down a little bit and that will lock the power head in the up or down position, securing it pretty good. Let's go ahead and put this back. Now, another thing that I mentioned earlier was that the square stabilizer and the round stabilizer all have the same center height. So no matter which one you bolt into the machine, they're supposed to be the same, um, at least as close as we can manufacture them. Now, what I learned here is that I took a 10 millimeter bolt, a, a bolt, I don't know, it looks like it's about 50 millimeters long. I took a 10 millimeter nut right here and a 10 millimeter coupling um, nut. Now you could use anything you want. I just happen to have this on hand. And I placed it underneath on top of this plate and I placed it in here and I ran the nut up the coupling nut up until it contacted this vertical plate right here, the main plate. I run it up, I tighten it up with my fingers. Now I can come along and tighten that lock up. The next time I go to load a stabilizer into the machine, all I would have to do is place this down there, run the power head onto it, lock my bolt, my nuts down, I'm good to go. I don't have to play the game of readjusting everything vertically because I just made myself basically an adjustable spacer. Um, so if you want to do something like that, it's, it's a real time saver. All right, let's move on. I got to stand up again. Oh boy. All right, here we go. <laughs>
For all you young guys out there who are making fun of me when I said, hey, it's time to stand back up, two things. Uh, first, you can kiss my butt. And the second thing is, don't worry, you're going to get older. Your time is coming. Anyway, here's what I've done. I've gone ahead and I've removed the upper rear cover off the stabilizer right here. I used a six millimeter hex wrench to do that. And that exposed the inner workings of the mechanism. You can see right here, if I move the switch back and forth, you can see the transfer balls going in and out. Now, take note to how loud it is when they're engaging. You can hear that, it's making a lot of noise, right? Reason is, is we have the transfer ball so far away from the material that the mechanism has plenty of time to accelerate and then basically slam into your tubing. We don't want that. So the way we're gonna minimize that is by using the lower adjuster bolt. We're gonna go ahead and engage the transfer balls and we're gonna turn in the lower bolt until it bottoms out right there. Now, I'm gonna back off half a turn and I'm gonna disengage the transfer balls. Notice, first of all, notice how much quieter it got. That's because we're not slamming into them anymore. It's only got a, a few milliseconds to contact the tube, so it doesn't build up a lot of speed. Also, looking at it, I can see I've got a little over a sixteenth of an inch. Um, I'm going to guess 83 thousandths of an inch, uh, a little over two millimeters of play on the tubing, which is fine. That'll give us enough play for the tubing to settle down onto the rollers because when the machine is rapiding up and down, we do not want the transfer balls dragging on the tubing. We want them clear and we want the roller to take over the function of supporting the tubing. So that there will help you adjust it there. Now I could back it off a little bit more and I, now I'm a good, oh, I'm a, I'm a good eighth inch off the tubing right there, three millimeters. And you notice it doesn't have that loud clanking noise, which tells me it's not slamming the balls into it. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take the 19 millimeter wrench end of the lever, and I'm gonna go ahead and snug that bottom one up. And we're good to go right there, working nice. All right, now the top bolt. Remember I mentioned earlier that you could have a situation to where you got a heavy piece of tubing, the carriages run to the far end of the machine, and just the sheer weight of, the, of your workpiece alone is enough to overcome the pneumatic system, you know, because it can only put out so much pressure, right? In that case, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna want to adjust the transfer balls against the tubing, and then you're gonna back them off slightly, not much, few thou, five thousandths of an inch. You want to be able to take your tubing and barely, barely wiggle it, you know? Now, the reason you want to do that is, um, and why you don't want to just close the transfer balls down on the workpiece, is if you're doing pipe. Tubing, of course, has pretty good ovility, how round it is. Um, you don't care about the dimensional size, you just care about how round it is and that the dimensional OD is roughly the same from one end to the other. Well, with a pneumatic stabilizer system, it will self-conform to that so it doesn't care. But in the situation where you have too much weight on the transfer, on the stabilizer and it can't support the weight, we're gonna adjust the transfer balls off the tubing, off the pipe a little bit because we can't accurately predict the ovility. We don't know if there's gonna be an issue, so let's back off a little bit. Now, once we do that, the, yes, the tubing's a little bit loose, there's gonna be a little bit of play. It's not gonna be a problem. Remember, the machines have torch height control, so they're gonna correct anything like that. Now, the top bolt up here, what it's for is we can actually lock those transfer balls into that position to hold them there so that they're not going to um, try to spread out. Now the way you would do that is you flick it down, turn this all the way in, I'm sorry, open them, turn it all the way in. Now if you notice, if I click it, you can't even hear it. That's because this is preventing the mechanism from operating because basically both bolts have locked down and that's gonna lock the transfer balls into that position. Normally, you're not gonna be using this much at all. This is gonna be a rare thing, but we did discover that it is something that's fairly valuable to have on the machine. All right, 
that's it for adjusting and setting up the stabilizer. There's nothing else I could think of to tell you. Um, what do you say we go ahead and put some tubing in this thing and you can watch this thing actually operate. Okay, what do you say we just go ahead and use Camelot. We'll create ourselves a test piece here real quick. I want to go ahead. First thing I want to do is um, go to create a frame. So as I do this, I want to pick a different size tube. And what it was, I went out there and I found some inch and a quarter pipe, a, a, a raw stick, a pretty long stick. So I want to go ahead and I'm going to change over to 1.66 right here. We'll go with that one there, make that active. Now let's go ahead and add a new tube. I'll start at zero, zero. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing right here. Um, other videos will do that. It's relatively easy. Basically, I'm making a part that's going to be about 12 inches long. So we'll say, okay, there's my 12 inch piece right there. Let's close the tool. Now, um, let's go ahead and put a couple of holes, maybe on this end here, maybe we're gonna wanna put an intersecting tube in it. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and say we're gonna start at X, but we're gonna start a little bit below it, maybe two inches below it. You know, in fact, I think I actually went over 12 inches, did I, out there was what I, or what I just said. So we're going to go minus two inches here. We're going to be below it. We're going to go ahead and add a point. We're just going to go up relative four inches. And the idea is I just want a, a tube right there. Okay. So I've got that done. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Let's go ahead and cut that out of the other piece. So we're going to cut tubes. And we're going to say select shapes to cut. We're going to cut that one. And we're going to cut it with this one right here. We'll say apply. All righty, there we go. We can close that. Now, we can go ahead and we have this piece selected. Let's make that helper geometry. And what helper geometry does is we were able to use it to actually cut holes, but we're not going to use it in the actual part itself okay all right let's do this let's go up now we're going to pop a couple of holes in this thing like i said this is a, a a pretty simple piece we're not we're not trying to um show off camelot or anything so let's go with a piece of one inch let's or um let's see od one inch sure um i have no idea why this is saying one and a half inch let's go ahead and change that to one inch and save it anyway we're going to go with one inch where did i put it right here we're going to make that our active profile. Let's go ahead and add a new tube. This time we're going to add it at the absolute position of, let's say, oh, I want it kind of close together. Let's say five. And once again, we're going to make this one, um, this time we're going to go Y minus two. We're going to say, okay, we're going to add a point and we're going to go relative. We're going to go Y six. All right, so if I rotate, you can see where I've cut a hole right through the middle. Go ahead and close it. Let's go ahead and add another cut just, just plainly for giggles. You can see right here we have, remember the helper tube is gone. Let's go ahead and back to edit tubes. We're going to add another tube. We're already set on one inch right here, so we're kind of good to go. Let's go ahead this time. Let's go out to X, uh, let's just see seven, okay? And we're going to go Z minus two. I want to be below it. I'm going to add my tube. I'm going to go relative up four inches. There we go. All right. And all I did was pop a couple holes in this bad boy. Let's go ahead and um, cut out these tubes also. We're going to select the shape that we're going to cut that. Now, I could select cut with all others, but I'm going to do it individually. Hold down the control key. I'm going to select that. I'm going to say apply it. Now, if I want to, I can come along and take this tube here and this tube here. Once again, let's, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to close the tool. My bad. Let's go ahead and select these two here. And I'm basically holding down the control key, clicked it. And we're going to make both of those helper geometry also. So that as I apply and close, this is the piece that we just created. Now, clearly, I could have made a much more complicated piece, but we are trying to just uh, quickly bang out a test piece, okay? All right, let's go ahead at this point, and we're going to make a job for this tube. There's no marking or scribing on it. We're just cutting. All righty, what it's asking me to do is how do you want to save it? 
and I'm going to call this the uh, super simple short tube. How about that? Alrighty, now you know why my guys yell at me when I name things. I'm, I'm terrible at it. All right, so we're going to call, I want to first of all, control C to copy that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do that. All righty. Now we have to add an operation. It's going to be a simple cutting operation. Okay, we're going to plasma cut and we're going to be cutting the S1 tube. So we'll say, okay. All right, now we cut the cuts here. We now have to go ahead and add an operation to cut the holes. Now I'm going to show you. Um, something that's kind of interesting about this. So we're going to pick the layer holes. We're not doing anything weird. We're just cutting that also. So if we zoom in right here, you can see where we have the lead in, lead out. We have all the cuts right there, right? Well, if we cut these two items here first, we're not going to be able to cut the holes because the part's going to fall out. So I'm going to drag it up one layer so that we're cutting the holes first. Then we're going to be cutting the the ends right there. All right, now what we need to do is we're going to nest it. Let's go ahead and tell it that uh, how many copies you want. Um, boop, boop, boop. Let's go with two copies, okay? We'll say two right here. We'll say enter. All right, and let's go over here and say nest tubes. And there we go. Now we have our two tubes nested. We're ready to, to um, generate code. Let's go ahead and hit run processor. Ru I'm sorry, run post processor. All right. And we're going to call this once again. It's going to put it out as NGC code, which is the numerical code for the machine. And we'll say dot NGC. All right. Let's see. Go. All righty. And on the right pane over here, this is all of our code here. Let's go ahead. I'm going to load up USB. I'm going to copy it over to it and let's head on back out to the machine. I've gone ahead and loaded up the program that we created with Camelot onto the controller. Let me show you something fairly interesting. I've disengaged the balls, the transfer balls, off of the material. Remember earlier I was talking about the possibility of dragging the balls, marking the part and everything? Listen to this. This is with the balls off of the tube. Hear how smooth the machine runs? Very nice, very smooth, right? Let's go ahead and engage the transfer balls. Now listen to the racket it's gonna make. You can hear it dragging up and down. You hear that? Tremendous amount of noise. That, my friend, is the problem. That's why we want to disengage the transfer balls off of the tubing when we're not cutting. Let's go ahead and disengage it. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is, since this is essentially the first time we put the stabilizer into the machine, we have changed the height of the power lift or the power head and everything. Now, keep in mind that really we only need to do this the first time we ever put a stabilizer in the machine, because if we take it out and put it back in later, and you do what I told you earlier about the, the settings and everything, then if we were to write down the offsets on the control panel, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, then all we gotta do is type those values back in. We don't have to do this. However, there is a very fast and easy way to determine the center of rotation so that the machine knows where the chuck's at. What it is, we have created what we call wizards. Now, currently there's two wizards. There's round tube and square tube. Let me go ahead. I am going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the screen better. This is the round tube wizard right here. Then the square tube wizard is right there. Now we are gonna be adding more wizards, for instance, the angle iron wizard, things like that. But right now we have those two in the machine. Let's go back to the round tube wizard. And it's asking for two pieces of information, the probe diameter and the tube diameter. I went and grabbed a stick of inch and a quarter pipe, which is 1.66 inches OD. So I have entered that in the top input box right here. And in the bottom one, I didn't have to change because we already had set it at one inch before. And it's always the same because that is the diameter of the copper end of the torch. Now I'm going to hit a button, generate button, and I am going to go back to plasma cut mode. Let me go ahead and zoom back out a little bit here. Okay. 
What it did, the wizard, was it created a short program to automate the process of finding the center of the tube. So let's go ahead and hit the run button. Now, I'm sorry, let me show you the step before that. What it wants us to do is basically take this torch and place it in the middle of the tube. And you can eyeball this, by the way. It, is, it doesn't have to be precise. And we want it just above the tubing, quarter inch, something like that. doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and move it a little closer to the center. Obviously, I haven't measured anything. This is just all eyeballing it. Now, if I hit the run button, it's going to come down, find the tube. Now it's looking for the, where the tube is in relation to the machine, left and right, right? Now it's going to rotate 180 degrees, and it's going to find the final diameter of your tube or pipe. At this point, we're done. The machine knows exactly where the power head is right there. So the next step is for us to um, actually load the real program and then cut our piece out. So let's do that. We're almost there. We have to go ahead and load the program that we're going to cut into the tubing. And then we're going to have to set the origin on the y-axis. Remember, you may want to cut this workpiece anywhere along this length of tubing. So we're going to tell the machine, this is where I want you to cut that workpiece. And that's setting y0 on the y-axis. All right, first thing, let me go ahead and zoom this in a little bit. I could show you a little bit better. All right, in order to load the main program, we're going to go to File, Import NGC. We're going to pick our program, and it's already loaded it. Now, what we want to do is, if you want to see what she looks like, kind of, you can see it kind of right here. Let me see, let me rotate her around a little bit, and then I'm going to try to zoom in. You can see it a little bit better. All right. All right, let's go zooming in, zooming in. Okay, you can see the torch, you can see the profile that it's going to cut out right there. Let's go ahead and turn that mode off. All right, we've got our program loaded, we've got that. Now we have to tell the machine what we're cutting. So we're going to go over here to select settings for the plasma. It's a PowerMax 85, you have a drop down. Since we only have a PowerMax 85 on this machine, it's only going to give you that choice. We're going to pick the material, mild steel. We're going to pick the wall thickness, 135, 10 gauge in this case. Now, you can also add any values you want to these lists. That's the subject of another video. We have fine cut shielded um, consumables in the machine. And we're looking, we have our cut quality set at five right here. That's also a subject of another video. And that will tell us down here in the bottom that we're going to need to set our plasma unit at 45 amps. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So it populated down here in the lower left so you know what's getting ready to go on or what's getting ready to happen, the setting that it's going to use to cut this part. Now, all we have to do is set the y-axis. Let me go ahead. And by the way, we're going to be setting that right here under quick work offset there's your different axes. Your B axis is the rotational axis. Then you have X is, is in and out. And then y, and, I mean, y is down the length of your tubing and Z is move the torch up or down. We're interested in this one right here, Y0. Let me go ahead and zoom back out. All right. Now, before I reposition the camera so you can see what's going on, this machine has the extension option installed on it. Therefore, it has a lifter in it. Whenever you order the extension, you automatically get the automatic lifter system. You're going to see the lifter drop out of the way automatically as the carriage goes by. Now, the cool thing about the RC6 is the machine itself is doing that, not the code. So no matter what programs you have written, and you want to run on this machine, you do not have to modify them like some other machines that are on the market with G-code telling it where the lifter is to get out of the way. No matter what you load in the machine, once you load the lifter and tell, uh, tell the RC6 where it's at, you don't even have to give it a second thought from that point on. I just wanted to point that out. Now, another thing is, too, 
I've loaded a pretty long piece tubing in this machine. It's about a 20 foot length of inch and a quarter pipe, which is a 1.660 inch diameter. And I don't want to cut to the very end because um, it's kind of hard to position a camera so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you in advance that I'm not cutting the end of the tubing. So we're going to have about a good, uh, I'm guessing an eight, nine foot section of tubing is going to fall when it's cutting. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to drop down into the trays, not going to hurt a thing. So you'll hear that noise. I want you to pay attention if you can to watch the um, transfer balls opening and closing as it operates. Also, you'll see the lifter automatically drop on its way down there. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to disengage the transfer balls, which they are, and I am going to run the head down the machine to where I want to cut the tubing. So, let me reposition the camera and I'll, I'll talk you through that. I'm way down here on the other end of the machine. I am now going to run the carriage up and set the axis. I'm going to click that Y0 button that I talked about. Let me go ahead and move that up. And I think we're going to go ahead. I got to look at the camera to see where it's at. Yeah, I think we're okay right here. We're going to move forward a little bit more. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it um, lined up so that you could actually see what's going on. And I, I, think, I think that's okay. Here's the, where the transfer ball is. Hopefully you'll be able to see in there. Let's go ahead. At this point now, we can go ahead and set the Y axis, which is nothing more than clicking that button. Now, I just hit the go button. So let's do it. Okay. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? All right, see all the smoke we got going on right there? That was my bad. I forgot to turn on the coolant. So I am going to hit the pause button. Now I made another mistake. I'm kind of glad I did it. Um, I had the override switch to where it wasn't allowing the transfer balls to close down on the tubing. Apologize for that, but it, it, it's good illustration point. I noticed it right away. Now, what was happening, the tube actually fell down onto the roller, which was adjusted just below it, so everything is cutting perfectly fine, no problem there whatsoever. So I went ahead, and I, that's why you saw me click that switch. I've got the coolant on. I had hit the pause button. Let's go ahead and hit resume. This is where you're going to hear the part fall. That's part one. Now we've re-engaged the transfer balls. They just disengaged, they re-engaged. Notice there's hardly no smoke now. That's because as soon as I turned on the coolant system, almost all the smoke went away. Before, when I started cutting, I forgot to turn it on and you saw a lot of smoke. That'll show you the advantage of the coolant system. Notice too that the lifter just automatically dropped out of the way. And that's it, we're done. So let's go ahead and turn off the coolant system. The hypertherm is going to keep the air running for a second. That's just what they do. Let me reach in here and I'll grab this part. Okay. Now, if we look at it, you can see there's hardly any debris. In fact, there is no debris inside it. And that has to do be, uh, with the, the fact that we were running coolant down it. But there's your finished part right there. 
Easy peasy. Now, I've shown you a lot of information. It's very simple to do once you know what's going on. I was just trying to overload you with information because in our opinion, an informed con, um, customer is a customer that isn't gonna be calling us for support all the time. So anyway, that's why I did it. I really wanna thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you out. And as always, we're here for you folks. Take care, have a great day, bye.